So today's series, Tongues of Fire. Uh, let's start by examining the truth about our words. First of all, let's look at our words as a gift from God. So when you open your mouth to speak, you have the opportunity to give to be a blessing to the people around you. Words can build up and tear down. We all understand that. Words shape the quality of our life. Jesus said, not what goes into the mouth defiles a person. What comes out of your mouth, this can defile you. So, in this series, we are talking about the art of gratefulness. Here's a quote from uh, Reverend Sun Myung Moon. Whoever can feel grateful, even in the midst of impossible circumstances, will find themselves in the highest place in the spirit world. It is worth spending the rest of your life learning how to do this one thing, mm -hmm. to be grateful under all circumstances. Mm -hmm. Is it easy to be grateful when things are going well? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it's great. You know, you feel on top of the world. In fact, in that moment, you can forget about God very easily. When things are going your way, mm -hmm. it's easy to take all the credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most um, challenging, of course, is to be grateful when things are not going well. Mm -hmm. So, what our what Reverend Moon, what our true parent is telling us here is to learn how to do that. It's not a natural response. Hey, you know, I'm feeling miserable today. It's great. Thank you so <laughs> much. But um, we all love somebody and it's such a good vibration to be around someone who's always grateful, no matter what, how they're feeling. And we all have our ups and downs. And when you're going through a low spot in your life, if you can be grateful, if you can have an attitude at least of trying to be grateful for that test, for that resolve of character, then everyone benefits. So here's a story from Luke. This is uh, happening after Jesus blessed and cured ten lepers uh, of their ailment. Now as you know, leprosy uh, skin disease that uh, often led to death because it was an incurable disease and people would often get an infection through their skin and then they would, they would pass away. But in the process of passing away, this would go on for years and you weren't allowed to live with your own family members because it was such a contagious disease. So if you caught leprosy, basically you were banned from your family. You had to go live in a leper colony and you basically were only surrounded by other people who had leprosy. Mm -hmm. So it was a very devastating disease. And um, 10 of them, you know, were beckoning Jesus from a distance, you know, to please cure them. And Jesus blessed them and told them to go see the, the local Pharisee, to show themselves to the Pharisee, because he wanted them to use, he wanted to use this example of, you know, God is with him. Um, and then, after they had been cured, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, Praise God, I'm healed! Fell face down on the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Does only this foreigner return to give glory to God? And Jesus said to the man, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. So, again, it's important to remember that those other nine, they were still healed, okay? Jesus didn't track them down and go, okay, I'm unhealing you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, what happened? <laughs> um, so, in that sense, we have to understand that when you receive a blessing from God, whether you say thank you or not, you're still going to get to have that blessing. But it's also important to remember that... Jesus was very mindful of the fact that only one person said thank you and the other nine didn't. So <clears throat> it's important to remember that too. Like for instance, 
when it's your wife's birthday, <laughs> like it was mine on Friday. And so my wife had her birthday on Friday. And as a, as a regular guy, I thought, okay, she knows I love her. <laughs> I don't need to say anything. I don't need to write a card. I don't need to make a cake. She knows this already. So I've been sleeping on the couch. <laughs> so, I mean, this is it with God. We think God knows how we feel. God knows my heart. I don't need to say thank you for the blessings in my life, right? And from this example, we know that God is very mindful of people who say thank you and people who don't. Uh, not that God is going to, you know, love you any less, but God will definitely appreciate it. Just like you look at your own children and you think, okay, which ones are showing gratitude and which ones aren't? And it's just very interesting how your heart just gravitates to certain individuals who show and express gratitude, sincere gratitude. And again, it's important because if God only blessed people who, said, who, who showed gratitude, then what would we be doing all the time? <clears throat> Thank you, God. Yeah. Thank you, God. <laughs> Thank you, God. And then, of course, that just ruins the whole... Um, I mean, they, they, that wouldn't be a sincere uh, expression of gratitude then, would it? Because we would be doing it conditionally, thinking, okay, if I say thank you like a hundred times, I'm going to get a hundred more blessings. Yeah. How about a thousand times? You know. <clears throat> so, um, so there's five truths about gratefulness. It's easy to forget about God during the good times. God blesses the grateful and the ungrateful alike. It matters to Jesus and God whether you say thank you or not. And grateful words reflect greater faith. Jesus said, your faith has made you well. And grateful words lead to spiritual blessings. So then, the question is, how do we develop this attitude of gratitude? Praise God first thing in the morning. Uh, I was um, reading this book on goals recently. Actually, it was an audio book. I was listening to it. I don't have time to read. <laughs> I can't read, me. <laughs> um, but um, it was uh, very interesting. This guy was talking about not just writing down your goals once a year and sticking with it. He said there is power in doing that. He says there's even more power in writing them down once every six months because you're reminding yourself of your goals every six-month intervals. There's even more power in writing them down, rewriting them every month. And he said the ultimate expression of goal setting is you write them down every single day. You put them foremost in your mind. You give your subconscious a reminder every day of what you want to accomplish. And your subconscious goes to work in trying to figure out how to get there. So the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. You don't know how you're going to get to your destination. You just know where it is. Just like a ship leaving port. If you don't know where that ship is going, then where is it going to end up? <laughs> exactly. So in that sense, when we look at our lives, we're so sophisticated. We have this amazingly sophisticated navigation system you know, called our mind and spirit. Where is it going? Have you set the coordinates of your destination? Have you reminded yourself every day of where that destination is? And do you know that every time you make a, um, a goal, you have to make adjustments? Like, for instance, uh, I heard this story told by a pilot who said that you have a destination, you're, you're going from San Francisco to Seattle. And on the way there, you have to make minor adjustments all the time. Otherwise, you're not even going to get to your destination. Mm -hmm. You're just going to be off track. So daily goal setting and daily goal reminders are a way in which we can help ourselves to be on track. So praising God first thing in the morning is like you're reminding yourself every morning, thank you. God made me. I'm alive today. This is not a day to take for granted. 
I am blessed beyond measure. Thank you. So you're doing that. You're starting your day like that every day. Here's a, a psalm. As for me, I will sing about your power. And this is, this is a guy who forcefully wakes up every day. I will shout with joy every morning because of your unfailing love. Wow. <laughs> That's a type A personality right there. Secondly, remove all complaints from my life. If there's, if there's one thing that you can do that will drain all energy and happiness from your life, it's to complain. Why do we complain? I think we complain because we feel there's going to be some relief from letting out this kind of bottled up resentment that we feel towards somebody or something or some process, whether it be a person or something like traffic or, you know, the government or whatever, you know, some entity. We feel that by complaining about it, we're kind of, you know, making ourselves feel better. And I think to a certain extent that might be true. But think about what's happening. When you're complaining, you're actually hoping for some kind of reciprocal dialogue about that. You're hoping that the person you're complaining to goes, yeah, yeah, I get the same feeling too, yeah. Let's complain about it together. And you get all energized about this thing. And yet, at the end of the complaint, you know, you're just left with this kind of empty, <sighs> sinking feeling. And if you've been complaining about something in public, then what you've started is you've started this kind of virus that's going to spread, probably. And it's not going to be a pretty, uh, pretty uh, clean-up job. So remove all, any, all complaints from your life. And the third, <coughs> this is uh, St. Paul. In case any of you are wondering whether complaining is a relatively new human phenomenon, <laughs> St. Paul, 2,000 years ago, in everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. And thirdly, incorporate prayer throughout my day. So prayer, again, is like the goal setting. It's like you're realigning yourself with God constantly every day. You're asking for God's guidance. You have big decisions to make. You have... Uh, ways in which you need to approach a certain thing and you want to have the right perspective. You want to seek counsel with the wise heavenly parent who's always there. So what a, what a smart thing to do. Every decision you need to make, every person you're about to approach and talk to in a, about a sensitive topic, ask God for guidance, for influence. Allow yourself to become an object through which God can flow. So again, that's the purpose of prayer, to connect. Pray at all times and on every occasion in the power of the Holy Spirit, says Paul. Pray without ceasing. And then developing an attitude of gratitude, um, saying thank you to those who bless you. Um, when we study divine principle, we um, get to a very interesting chapter called Returning Resurrection. I'm not going to go into it in detail here, but the premise of returning resurrection is how this is how God solves the problem of sin in the world. Okay? People have lived on this earth, they've died, they've gone into the spirit world, and they have found that they're not in the kingdom of heaven. And how does God solve this problem? Because ultimately, it's human responsibility that will enable people to grow spiritually. God cannot make you grow spiritually. Only you can. So the assistance that God gives us here on earth is sometimes by hitting us or allowing us to be hit, literally, by so-called evil spirits in the spiritual world. And this is why bad things happen to good people. And one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. So when something bad happens in your life, you know, car accident, um, health issues, um, some kind of um, money gets stolen or whatever, then the appropriate response would be to blame somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets that, right? I mean, we all feel the, the need and the, the desire to do that. But if you can develop an attitude of gratitude 
for the situation and thank God in that moment, just like Reverend Moon said, when bad things happen, if you can develop an attitude of being grateful under those circumstances, then first of all, you are setting up an incredible indemnity condition, a very powerful indemnity condition, and which will help not only resurrect your spirit, but also the spirits of those around you. And also, it will help solve God's headache of how to bring his children back to him, the ones that are in the spirit world. Mm -hmm. So developing an attitude of gratitude is fundamental to your own happiness and to the happiness of the people around you. So, again, we look at the example from Luke. Uh, when he saw that he was healed, he came back to Jesus, praised God, I'm healed, fell face down on the ground, Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. So expressing that kind of gratitude. And the last point I wanted to mention was, enjoy today as if I were on vacation. Have you ever been on vacation and you've done like a chore for somebody and you felt like, hey, this, this is kind of fun thing to do. It's not particularly <laughs> pleasant to do this particular chore, but hey, I don't mind doing it and you know, I'm having a good time you know, doing this thing. Um, like you've been on vacation, you've gone to visit your parents. And then your mom or your dad says, oh, you know what, my, my back is out. Can you um, go rake up the leaves on the lawn, please? Or can you do this? Can you do that? And you feel, yeah, sure. And then because you're on vacation, you feel like a sense of freedom and a sense of peace. Mm -hmm. And as you go about doing these different tasks and chores, you don't feel that this is such a big deal. And you have a, a very good attitude about it. But if you were to have that attitude every day as you go about your business, think about how powerful that would be. Okay? They've, um, they've done a lot of um, tests on, uh, or investigations in people who have won the lottery. And they noticed that when you win the lottery, when you mi win millions and millions of dollars, guess how people feel? Can anyone guess? They feel happy. <laughs> okay, we'll, help, we'll all have to guess. I don't think any of us here have won a million dollars. But, but actually, people who do win a million dollars, they feel happy on that day. And maybe for a few weeks after that. But pretty soon, they go back to the same level of happiness that they were at. And, and sometimes even lower than that. And that was uh, interesting to read that because it reminded me that we pretty much make up our mind on how happy we decide to be. If you lose your job, you feel depressed and sad and upset and frustrated. But how long does that feeling go on for? A day, a week, a month, six months? Eventually you get over that and you get back into finding a different job or doing something other than what you were doing before. And your happiness level is restored to where it was before you lost your job. Mm -hmm. So in other words, your emotional state is pretty much something that's not always controlled by outside events. Mm -hmm. You can actually have a great say on your emotional atmosphere. You can't control the weather, but you can control the emotional atmosphere in your mind and heart mm -hmm. to a certain extent. So if we want to live a life that is blessed with fortune, a life of meaning, a life of happiness, then we need to have or we need to choose gratitude in every part of the day, whether it be a bad part, good part, up, down, challenging part especially. Mm -hmm. And we need to be especially mindful to choose that attitude when we're going through difficulties. There is nothing better for people than to be happy in their work. That is why they are here. No one will bring them back from death to enjoy life in the future. We often make that mistake, don't we, of thinking, okay, here I am. I'm seven years old. When I'm ten, oh my gosh, it's going to be awesome. I can get to do this, I can get to do that, 
And then you arrive at the age of 10. And then you're thinking, this sucks. <laughs> when I'm 14, oh, that's going to be awesome. And then 14 arrives. And it's always like you set your bar a little higher, a little higher, a little higher. So when you arrive at that spot that you thought would be the bomb, you always find that <sighs> when somebody was asked once, how much money do you need to make? And the person's response, and he was wealthy, he was saying, just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. oh, they asked 20-something year olds, you know, what do you want in life? You know, if you were to get a nice car, a nice house, vacation, what, you know, they, they listed like, you know, several things. Which of these would make you happy? And they listed their, they had about one or two of those things, but they wanted three of them. They wanted three that they didn't have. Mm -hmm. And they asked the same group of people 16 years later, okay, which of those things that you wanted do you now have? And they found that they now, instead of having on average one of those things, they now have three of those things. But guess what? They still wanted three or f sometimes four more of those things. Than, and they felt that when I get those things, then I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. But the point of the story is that there's always something else. There's always a higher aspiration of wanting something that you don't have. Instead of looking at what you have and feeling grateful for it and realizing that life is the journey, not so much the destination, but appreciating every day as it comes, whilst thinking of the future, of course, but appreciating every day as it comes. Mm -hmm. Shout for joy to the Lord, O earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us, we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Wow. Imagine if we had that kind of attitude every day. Hey, I just lost my job. Praise the Lord! <laughs> I can't make my mortgage this month. We might get kicked out of our house. Praise the Lord! It's, wow, it seems almost unreal. <laughs> but <laughs> I think the point is, we are supposed to give it a shot. <laughs> and by doing so, we are going to find that there is more assistance available than we first imagined. And then when we look back on the situation, we realize the life changes that we made as a result of that loss in our life, whether, whatever it was, were actually a big, huge blessing in our life. They uh, interviewed this guy for this book. Um, he went to Mount Everest and uh, he got caught in a blizzard, he got separated from his company and his... Uh, his co-climbers couldn't find him for hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, they eventually found him and he was basically frozen. And um, they thought he had basically died. So they had to leave him there and they went back down to camp to telephone his wife and let her know what happened. In the meantime, this guy got up and his arm was frozen so he's walking around. He's got s snow blindness. So he can't see where he's going, but he groped his way back into the camp. And, and even then, when he arrived, they were shocked, of course. They still thought, okay, he's not going to make it right. through the night. Amazingly, they got down to a lower altitude. The helicopter was able to arrive. You know, he eventually went back to Austin, Texas, had surgery. I don't know how many, like 150 surgeries, removing this, putting this part here and putting that part there putting him back together as best they could. Basically, he lost you know, a few limbs. and He says that was a great experience for him in teaching him the value of life. And he, if he hadn't had that experience, he would be a different person, and he hates to think what kind of person he would have been. Mm -hmm. 
But we don't all have to go through that kind of experience in order to experience gratitude. Or at least we ho- I hope we don't. <laughs> but I think that that story and that man's testimony helps to remind us of how blessed we really are. And that is the kind of attitude that God would like us to have. Remember, God is your parent. So even if you don't have children, try to imagine if you did have children and how happy you feel when you give a gift to a child and the child shows genuine appreciation and thanks to you for that gift. And imagine the reverse, that God gives you a gift and then you just swallow it up and don't even say thank you. I mean, God, you know, must feel very sad, very disappointed, very, I don't know, aching, like his aching feeling. You don't love the child any less, but you just feel like, my love is not reciprocated. So gratitude is a way of reciprocating with God. It's a form of continuing the dialogue. God wants to give, we want to give back. God wants to give, we want to give back. And that is the kind of life that we should live. (coughs) So once again, words from Reverend Sun Myung Moon. Whoever can feel grateful, even in the midst of impossible circumstances, will find themselves in the highest place in the spiritual world. It is worth spending the rest of your life learning this one thing. Learning this one thing. Learning. Why? Because it's a learned response. This is not a natural way of being for people in the fallen world. You know, we learn this from our parents, we learn how to respond to all kinds of situations from our parents, from our teachers, from our coaches, and we are trying to set up a new tradition in this world. You know, look at Jesus' response. He's being crucified, okay? He's being crucified, and what does he do? He blesses the people that are crucifying him. This is an amazingly revolutionary way for a human being to respond. So revolutionary, the world had never seen anyone respond like that before. And it just changed the world history since Jesus was, was, was killed. Um, he's an unknown figure living in a postage stamp sized country somewhere in the corner of the Roman Empire. And this one person's lifestyle, an example of life, transformed world history. So think about the power of gratitude in your family, in your workplace, in your own heart and spirit. What powerful effect your words can have on other people and on your own heart as well as on your relationship with your your Creator. And if we have that kind of mindful dialogue with God every day, learning how to respond in a positive way no matter what's going on around us I think this world hasn't seen anything yet Mm. please join me in prayer our beloved heavenly parents thank you so much for reminding us of our value to you reminding us that we are your children that we are each other's brother and sister and that we have a responsibility to help one another and to return glory and joy to you. We wish and we hope and we want to learn to be grateful for our situation, to learn to appreciate the blessings that we have and the challenges that each and every one of us face. We thank you so much for reminding us and we hope that throughout this day and this coming week that we can practice the art of gratitude. And we offer this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen and our Jew. Uh, I think it would be a good idea to just spend a few minutes uh, processing that before it gets completely forgotten. <laughs> Thank you.